Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for M Crater. Today what we're going to be looking at is the final part for the login screens for the entities, blocks, items, and just general GUI logins. Uh, this one is going to be focusing on the entity form. Now there isn't actually a GUI to log into instead because how entities work, it's a little bit hard to make a procedure without having to work around certain uh, criteria for the dependencies and stuff like that. So I wasn't able to actually do that, but I was able to figure out a alternate way of doing it. So this is what we're going to be covering today. The first thing that we need is a, any item with any name. So the one what we're holding is actually going to be the password name. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and our, we can also use vanilla names as well. So feather, if we right click on the purple slime with the stick in our main hand, like so, it can, it's, it will uh, output a text that says we have set the password to one, two, three, four, five. So now we can access it and it will allow us to store our diamonds and stuff in here. No problem. Um, now if we wanted to lock it, we just need to have our item in our offhand and our a, a secondary item in our main hand. And then we can right click on the entity and the entity will be locked. So when it's in its unlock or lock state, it has some interesting properties. But uh, you can also change the password. Now, if we were to try to open it with the feather, it's going to not work because it's not the proper key uh, combination for the name. If we switch it out with that and right click on it, we can unlock the entity. And we can swap out the offhand item for a new item and have the primary tool. And we can change the password text to feather. So again, if we want to switch it over back to our other password, we can do that by just switching our offhand item. Now that other property that I was talking about uh, is actually really useful because if you want to protect your items, make sure it's in its lock state, we can give ourselves strength and then we can try to destroy this entity and it's on fire it should be it only has like 20 health or 10 heart 10 full hearts so it should be dead by now and the sword has fire aspect to sharpness 5 and what's happening is it has tons of potion effects that are happening it's also getting its health reset every time it takes some damage so if we go and lock up our entity again wherever my stick went somewhere around here you know what? i have more that's okay so if we right click on it to unlock it we can actually access the inventory and as you can see it was a one hit kill so let's go into amp crater and i'll show you how it all works so there are five different parts of this particular project there is the actual entity, the inventory for the actual entity itself, and then there is when the player right clicks on the entity for the procedure for the entity, and then there is uh, the purple slime when it's hurt, and also an update tick procedure as well. So let's browse the actual entity file first, and we'll see how this is all set up. So first thing, I have basically just assigned the model to the entity model. The texture of the entity has been assigned and I've changed the color just a little bit and given it a label so it can be easily seen in a distance. The other thing that I've changed is the creatures, uh, basically assigned the behavior to creatures so iron golems don't try to destroy it. And I've also set the entity's health to 20. I think the default was 10 and I've set it to 20 because it's the same as a player. So that's basically the only difference on this page. 
I haven't set any particles and I've set the inventory to the inventory that I've created right here. Very simple inventory with nine slots. And again, the inventory slot count is set to nine here. For triggers, I have the when entity hurt on entity tick update and when right clicked on entity. These are the three main procedures that we have in our main folder right here. Uh, for AI tasks, I have just basically look around and swim slash float in water. Uh, no additional conditions were added to that and AI is enabled. For spawning, I don't have it to actually spawn. It needs to be placed down with a spawn egg. So let's cover the actual procedure for the right click. That's the one that's going to be the most um, time consuming. So I'm not actually going to be covering how to build this from scratch. There's a lot that's going on and I don't expect anyone to actually go and build this from scratch. There's a lot of things going on here. So I have updated the tutorial for the login screen uh, project files on my website. You can download that from my Google Drive account. Uh, the link has been in the description for the actual download page. So if you go to my website and then scroll down, there's a big download button and then you click on that and then you'll be able to download the zip with all the different examples for the login screen that I've created. There, I think there's like four in total now. So all the files will be in here, including the procedures and all the extra little tidbits. So with that being said, um, what we have is the procedure for the right click. I'll explain how what's going on here so you at least know what's going on. I won't be covering how to create it though. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is actually test if the entity has a password. So I've basically assigned the entity uh, a MBT tag for entity has password and I've set this to true. So we're testing if it has a password. If not, then we're not going to run this section of the script. The other section, if it's false, if it doesn't have that variable, then what it's going to do is test if the entity does not have a item in the main hand of the uh, provided source entity, which is the player. So if the player does not have error in their main hand, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the password um, variable for the entity which will be used later on to the get display name of the main hand of the provided source entity. So the source entity again is the player. We're just getting the display name of the item that they're holding. And then what we're doing is we're setting the logic variable entity has password to true. So it will run this from that point on. After that, uh, we're also printing out a message just to let them know that the password has basically been set and that the, what the password is. So we, we do this by basically printing out the text above and then we're just doing a quotation at the end, getting the variable of the password here. And then we're going to end it with a quotation just so it looks pretty. So if it has a password, then what it's going to do is test if the player in the main hand has a main hand item. So if the player has, for example, our golden sword that we were using, this can be any item that you want, but this is going to be the main trigger item to basically run the script. If they have it in their main hand, then what we're going to do is we're going to run this script here. If they don't, then we're going to test if the entity is locked. And if it is locked, then we're just going to close the GUI. This will prevent the player from taking items out of the inventory if it's locked. And then we're going to just send a message saying that the entity is locked to the source entity. So with that being said, if the player does have the sword in their main hand, then what we want to do is just close the GUI 
uh, because we don't want to open the GUI every time we right click on the entity, but we still need to have the right click event to basically allow us to access the inventory. So anytime that we're running the script, we need to close the GUI so we can easily access, do what we need to do without having a GUI pop up in our face. After that, what we're doing is we're testing for a condition if the entity is locked. If the entity is locked, then what we're going to do is we're going to get the display name of the offhand of the source entity, which is our player. And then we're going to test if that's the same display name as the password that we set down here. If that's true, then what we're going to do is we're going to toggle the uh, entity locked variable, which is set to false by default um, because it's in its, I believe, uh, if it's locked. So if it's locked, then it's going to set it to false, which will make it unlocked. And then we're just going to say to the player that the entity has been unlocked. After that, if it's if it is unlocked already, then what we're going to do is we're going to test if the display name in the offhand of the player is the same as the password. And if that's true, then what we're going to do is we're going to lock it and lock the entity. And then we're going to let the entity know that it's been locked. Now, if it's not the same display name as the item in the um, for the password that we set, then what we're going to do is basically test if the and the item in the main hand is not error. And if that's not error, then we're going to change the password to the new item. Now, we've basically done this by doing the same thing that we've done with the set password down here. We just basically get the set the password, get the display name of the password, and then what we do is we basically get the offhand item. And then we're just printing out again the same thing down here. Outside of that, that's all this procedure does. So let's go back and then we'll take a look at when the entity is hurt. So when the entity is hurt, what we're doing is we're basically getting testing if the entity is in its lock state. If it's in its lock state, then what we want to do is basically set the health of the entity and then we're going to set it to the maximum health of the entity so we're basically whatever damage it does take it's going to set it to the maximum damage or maximum health that it can actually receive so it's as soon as it goes down it's going to go right back up so that's all that's going on here if it's locked and then there is the entity tick update, which is where I was applying some of the um, extra potion effects and stuff like that. So again, if the entity is locked, then what we're doing is we're adding a potion effect of instant health, strength, regeneration, resistance, fire, water breathing, and slow falling. All these things basically help keep the entity alive if depending on a number of uh, different attacks. So it won't drown, it won't um, catch fire and burn to death. Uh, it will be really resistant to most damage. It won't take fall damage either. And the strength and res uh, it has basically strength, resistance, or strength, regeneration, and instant health. It's applying every two ticks and that's at a level 11 so it's basically applying all these potion potion effects and that's all there is to it outside of that if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out